Hey, what's up? So here is the final control rig for the motorcycle. All of this animation is happening um, from control rig. And we can drive these controls that I'll show in a second from the VTuber or from an Xbox controller or from whatever we want. So the first control up here uh, allows us to turn. And I'm eventually going to control this from um, my head. So when I turn my VTuber's head, this control is going to go back and forth and we'll have a VTuber actually on, or a MetaHuman rather, actually on the bike as well. The next control here will control how much um, bouncing is happening. We keep the wheels on the road, but you'll see that the shocks are basically being activated. And we can just keep adding noise. And currently the speed of the wheels and the speed that this is bouncing is fixed, but we could add noise to this as well. Um, so it doesn't look so uh, repetitive all the time. So we can turn that back off, and the next control I have is to be able to do a wheelie like this. And you'll see that the bike is smoothly going into a wheelie as well, it's not jerky. All of these controls have smoothing applied to them, or spring interpolates. And then even within a wheelie like this, uh, we can add the noise back into it to keep it looking realistic. And even go like full crazy like this. And with it even on still, we can come back down. Which looks a little weird because it's kind of like counter animating itself. Yeah, it looks super weird actually. It's better just to do it this way. Maybe just a little bit. So the idea again for this is to drive this live with a metahuman on it. So VTubing or live animation, live mocap. And so the next step for me is to put a metahuman on this and design their control rig to keep their hands iCade onto the handles, whatnot. And then it'll look like they're driving it and I can have a live face and a live body just like I'm doing now and kind of trigger these different controls uh, at runtime. So this is the control rig graph that allows us to do this. And while I have basically three controls here that I'm gonna primarily drive from the game, we actually have other controls down here and there. They're just kind of grayed out, but they're kind of like helper controls that give us the ability to control multiple things at once and actually control the behavior of how fast things move um, or change value. So you can kind of see some of that stuff happening down there. And this graph's a little bit too much to really explain quickly, but uh, this is the the turn controls, we're using a spring interpolate. That's, how, that's what allows this to uh, move smoothly, this back and forth here. So basically this control moves and this control tries to keep up with it. And then this controls two other controls uh, is kind of the setup we have going there. And if I turn this switch on here, I can control this turn value externally. So from like my head as a VTuber or from like an Xbox controller or something like that. So this allows me to turn that off and on. Uh, this is the same thing for the wheelie control. This just gives me kind of like smooth wheelie movements like this, right? And it's a spring uh, interpolation. So it's like a simulation on each control. Uh, so you can give it mass and we'll change how this kind of moves, right? Without it being actually like a full on physics uh, simulation with collisions or anything like that. Uh, this is the bike tilt controller, which is basically moving the root bone of the bike rotating it and then counter animating the uh, shocks. Uh, this is the turn group, which is kind of cool. This uh, is more direct logic for this that's happening here. And what's kind of nice about this, if you do this kind of work, is that we can actually do curves with remapping all in one node directly in the graph, which is cool. Or you can have this reference an external curve, but doing the curves directly in control is pretty awesome. And this, uh, I haven't commented on them. These are basically direct controls. These are what these little gray balls are doing. These just directly map a control to a, a bone rotation, essentially. So there's nothing special there. It's, uh, it's the abstraction of controlling these controls that makes things kind of special. And you'll see here that the wheels are spinning uh, by themselves. So we can control that as well from like a speed parameter or whatnot. But basically, if I make this value faster, these will go faster and slower, which is pretty nice. Uh, and that's done with uh, an accumulate time, basically. It's like a delta time, and then you feed it right into the rotation. So we get automatic wheel spinning, and lots of different things can be done with that. And uh, this logic's a little bit more advanced, but this is how we basically get the ability to add this bouncing. So similar with accumulate time, we're using a sine wave, which is gonna like make the value go up and down, up and down. 
and we control uh, how much it goes down and some other stuff based on a controller and some other controls and we have another curve remap here which is very handy to have this type of stuff all right here in one little graph like pretty simple and the last piece here is um, this controls the wheelie uh, so basically both of these controls are sub controlling this which is allowing the bike to move back and forth but while this one is basically adding like noise to it you can think of it that way uh, this one is basically offsetting that while keeping the noise and that's what this setup is here where we're getting it um, but then adding something to it and then setting it back or rather this is the getter and getting and setting the same variable but then adding an offset which is basically this um, this slider here so that's a quick overview of the control rig to get this bike to do all this stuff like really pretty nice and compact in control rig and now I'll show a time lapse of me building it live, which I did on Twitch.